I'm Mark Matsumoto, and today I want to show you a quick Japanese style pasta using uni or sea urchin to make a rich briny sauce. So stick around! Uni refers to the orange or yellow roe inside sea urchins, and it's one of those foods that people tend to love or hate. Good uni is sweet and briny and loaded with umami, which makes it the perfect accompaniment for pasta. Here in Japan, it's often served as a cream sauce for spaghetti. And although it may seem fancy, it's super easy to prepare. Looks pretty good, right? Let's have a look at our ingredients. For the sauce, I've got two tablespoons of olive oil, one large clove of garlic, two anchovies, a quarter cup of sake, and one teaspoon of soy sauce. I'm also going to be using 150 grams of uni with a quarter of it set aside for garnish, along with a third cup of whipping cream. For the pasta, I have 200 grams of spaghetti and five green shiso leaves which I'm going to use as a garnish. To prep the garlic, I'm going to cut some slits from the tip almost to the root end using the tip of a sharp knife. Then I'm going to rotate the clove 90 degrees and make the same slits again. Now I'm going to rotate the clove 90 degrees on the other axis and mince it up. This doesn't need to be perfect, but if you still have some big chunks of garlic, just go back over it with a knife like this. Now I'm going to mince up the anchovy fillets. Anchovies get a bad rap for being fishy, but if you get good ones, they shouldn't be fishy and they add tons of umami to any food. I usually look for anchovies that are more pink in color than gray, and the more expensive ones generally taste better. For the shiso, I'm going to roll up the stack of leaves like this. Then I'm going to use a sharp knife to cut them into thin threads. This is called a chiffonade in chef speak, and it's a good way to prepare garnishes. By the way, if you can't find chiso, basil or scallions are both tasty substitutes here. Next, I'm going to prepare the uni cream. Just add the uni to a bowl and use a whisk to mash it up. You can also do this in a food processor, but I like for there to still be some chunks of uni in the sauce, so I don't fully puree it. Once it's looking kind of like this, I'm going to add the cream. Then you want to stir this together until it's combined, but don't whip it into a mousse. Okay, our prep's done, so let's head over to the stove where I've got about 5 cups of water boiling. I'm going to add a half teaspoon of salt to the water, and then I'm going to go in with the spaghetti. Get it submerged into the water and set the timer for 2 minutes less than what's specified on the package directions. My spaghetti is pretty thick and the package time says 11 minutes, so I'm going to boil it for 9. Before we finish this off, I want to thank Musubi Kiln for providing the beautiful plateware I use in most of my videos, including this one. I really love the pattern on this Minoware plate by Hibino Ceramics, and you can check it out along with all the other plates of my collection using the link down below. If you find something you like, be sure to use coupon code NORECIPES to get 5% off your order. When the pasta is 3 minutes away from being done, add the olive oil to a pan over medium heat, and then I'm going to add the garlic. Next, I'm going to add the anchovies and fry the mixture until the garlic is super fragrant and cooked through, but don't let it brown. Now, I'm going to add the soy sauce and fry it until most of the liquid is gone. This concentrates the soy sauce while giving it a toasty flavor. Then I'm going to add the sake and let the mixture boil until it no longer smells like alcohol. Okay, our pasta should be ready now, so I'm going to transfer it straight from the pot and into the frying pan along with some of the boiling liquid. This is the same method used to make aglio e olio, and what you're doing here is cooking the pasta like risotto by adding a little liquid at a time. This coaxes out the starch in the pasta and creates a creamy emulsion with the oil.
Now I'm just gonna repeat this a few times until the spaghetti is cooked. Okay, my pasta is nice and al dente, so I'm gonna pour in our uni cream and finish it off. Then we just need to toss this together until the cream is thickened into a gloriously rich and creamy sauce. Do you hear that? That's the sound you want from the pasta. If your spaghetti starts to stick, or it isn't making these juicy noises, just add some more boiling liquid to thin the sauce out. This is looking perfect, so I'm gonna use a pair of tongs to get a twirl of uni pasta into a small bowl and swirl it around. Then I just tip the tangle of pasta onto our plate to serve it. I'm gonna top this off with some fresh uni, and then to finish it off, I'm gonna hit it with some of our green shiso. All right, you ready to try this uni pasta out? I know I am. Itadakimasu. Oh, it looks so good. It's super creamy. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get some of that fresh uni with some of that pasta. And you can hear, listen to that. It's so juicy. All right, here we go. Mm. You've got that rich, creamy sauce and that fresh sea urchin in there that adds this bright, briny flavor with a hint of sweetness. And the umami from the anchovies and the soy sauce team up with that sea urchin in your mouth to create this explosion of briny flavor. By the way, I know you're probably wondering why I'm eating this with chopsticks, but it is a Japanese pasta after all. All right, let's go for another bite here. Get some little shiso in there and some more uni. <laughs> That's so good. Well, I think I'm gonna go enjoy the rest of this with a glass of sake, but check out this playlist for more Japanese style pastas, and I'll catch you in the next one.